go. Hi guys, welcome back to another episode of the Purposeful Wisdom Podcast. My name is Dawn Christine. Thank you guys so much for being here. For those of you just joining, welcome, welcome. For those of you returning, welcome back. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe. You know that this platform is a platform for healing and I wanna give you guys all the tools for your toolboxes. I have a wonderful guest with me today. Her name is Jennifer Arthurton. Jennifer is the founder and creator of All Chicks No Shit, a community and a podcast designed to inspire and support midlife women in chasing their dreams and creating their kick-ass new chapter. Jennifer is a former Fortune 500 marketing executive turned midlife mentor, podcast host, writer, and speaker. Having survived her own midlife crisis and subsequent course correction, she has a passion for helping other women uncover the inherent power and wisdom of a time of life when they often feel overlooked and doubt themselves most. Hi, Jennifer. Welcome. Thank you so much for having me. Oh, the pleasure is all mine. I love this because I feel that when you hit a certain age, it's all of a sudden, like you have this epiphany moment of like, my God, I thought I knew shit, but I didn't know shit. Isn't that true, right? <laughs> and we get into this, this area of our lives where we start to become enlightened and we start to really analyze the importance of things in our lives. What is truly important? What is not important? And I feel once you hit your forties and beyond, we start to like, look back and go, wow, like when I was in my twenties, I, I thought I knew everything, you know, crap. And now that I'm in this stage of my life, I know so much more, but I know there's so much more still to discover. So how did you get on this path? Well, it's, it's interesting that you, that you mentioned, you know, about your twenties, because the name old chicks, no shit actually came from early in my career. Like when I was probably in my late twenties, and what it came from was in the corporate world, when we would have new people join the team, we would say, follow the old chicks because they know what's up, right? Like they know right. the shit is what we used to say. And it was only when I turned 50 that I was like, oh, I get what that really means now, right? <laughs> because you're right. right. Like you think you know a lot and then you realize, wow, I didn't know anything back then. Um, so yeah. And so in my fifties, that term actually just started to mean a whole lot more to me, um, because I found myself at the age of 50, like in the year leading up to my 50th birthday, I found myself divorced, unemployed, an empty nester, and I was bedridden with a stress-related illness. And I truly believed that that was like the beginning of the end for me. Like this is the end of my life because all of kind of the roles and titles and who I thought I was in the world was stripped away from me. So if I wasn't a wife, if I wasn't a mother, if I wasn't a corporate executive, and at the time I was like big time gym goer too, and I literally couldn't get out of bed. I was like, well, who am I? And what was really scary is beyond those titles and those roles, I had no idea who I was. And so I lay in my bed for a long, long time, like staring up at the ceiling going, who are you and what do you want? And I didn't have an answer for it because, and a big reason why I didn't have an answer for it is because I couldn't see possibility for my own life. Um, and a big chunk of that had to do with the fact that, you know, we live in a culture that says, you know, as soon as you turn like 45 or 50, it's the beginning of the downhill slope into old age oblivion, right? Like, 50 year old women are seen as less valuable, less relevant. People aren't starting over. I'm supposed to be riding off into the retirement sunset, you know, on the arm of a handsome man with a pot of gold under my arm. And I'm like, right. but none of that is my reality. So what's left? Like what's possible for me? And it took a long time for me to come across to the point where I was like, wait a minute. I'm 50. I have a 30 year or maybe longer chapter ahead of me. Am I really going to like coast into the finish line for 30 years? Like how absurd is that? Right. Um, and then I realized I'm like, okay, this is an opportunity for me to create a life based on what I want, what I want and what's important to me. Because one of the things I realized is that, you know, along the way and for so many of us, this is true. We're handed the script to life really early on and it tells us exactly what to do and when. So, you know, go to school, get good grades, get a good job, work your way up the ranks, somewhere in there, stop and have a kid and a family and a nice house and all of that kind of stuff, right? 
And, you know, I was checking all of the boxes, doing all the things that I thought. And I realized that one of the things I had never done was to ask myself if this is what I wanted or if this was making me happy. Because that wasn't on the checklist anywhere. It was just what I was supposed to do. And then, so that was the beginning of like, I can recreate this chapter of my life in any way I want. First, I need to figure out who I am and what I want, but I have an opportunity to create here. And I oh still my have, gosh, you know, yeah, I still have the, like, there's so much more I want to do in this world. Hey, so, I am woman, hear me roar, like seriously. Right. And, and and I can relate, I could definitely relate to you because I'm divorced, kids, like I had the whole thing too, you know, the house and the husband and the kids. And it's like, when everything is stripped away, it's like, who? what's left like yeah. because you yeah. you tend to lose yourself in all those things because you play all these different roles you play wife you play mom you play superwoman you play all these different roles and then at the end of the day when all of that is stripped from you you're like what am I left with like I forgot along the way who I was and the things I wanted and the things that drove me right. and my passions and my desires and it's like you start, it really is starting from a clean slate and really going within and looking at yourself and going, okay, well, now that nothing is there, I have this opportunity to create the life I want to live. And it's almost like being reborn for me. It, it was is. definitely like this feeling of empowerment of like, wow, like nothing is kind of in my, yes, I'm still a mom, of course, and, but no husband to attend to, like, I get to focus on me and the things I want to do. So what did that journey look like for you? How did you get onto this road of discovering who you were at 50? Yeah. Well, you see, that's the thing, right? Like, again, we as women are cultured to see our value in what we do for other people, right? Like, you know, am I a good wife? Am I a good mom? You know, am I a good employee? Is my body physically pleasing to somebody outside of myself? Like it's everything, all of the validation in our life comes from outside of us. And we never actually learn to A, listen to ourselves and B, trust ourselves. So, you know, leading up to, you know, kind of my midlife crisis, you know, there was this little voice that would pop up every once in a while. And it would say to me, like, I'd find myself like in a boardroom in a meeting, like half listening. And this little voice would be like, is this it? Is this what you wanted? Is this like, really what's making you happy? And I would have this like line of questioning. And I would immediately shut it down because I didn't know what to do about it. Right? A, I didn't trust it. I'm like, you should be grateful for all the things you have the nice house, the nice husband, yada, 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 you should just be grateful. I used to say that to myself all the time. And, you know, I would shut this little voice down and really that little voice was calling me to something, but I was too afraid to look at it. And I hear this so often from so many women, like, and when you stop listening to that inner voice, it eventually goes away. Like you become disconnected from it. And yeah. that's what's happened to most of us. We reach this place in our lives. Like we're busy doing, raising families, having careers, doing all the things. And then we reach a place in our lives where we're like, okay, there has to be something more, but we can't figure out what, because we've stopped listening to ourselves. Like we don't know what makes us happy. We don't know who we are or what we want. And so for me, that journey was really a journey of reconnection with myself. Um, and, you know, you know, luckily for me, you know, I'm like a very busy person, always got something on the go, right? The fact that I was bedridden with a stress-related illness where I literally couldn't do anything, I had to just be. And I would literally just ask myself over and over again, like, who are you? And I would sometimes a little answer would come, right? And over a period of time where I started, like I started journaling, I started making, you know, time for myself to actually like just literally sit and hear myself like what's coming up for me I would ask myself questions it was like like you're building in a relationship with a, another person right it's like spending time with yourself asking yourself questions and getting to know who you are right and in the process of that it starts to awaken that little voice inside you you're like oh now you're listening I have some things to say <laughs> right usually um, a lot too some I found lot. sitting in the silence was was key and some, yes. and we don't like that. We don't like sitting in silence, but I think that is the ultimate key of finding out who you are. Yeah. I mean, I always say, you know, like to the women in my coaching programs, silence, stillness, and solitude 
are like the three key ingredients, because if we can get to those or some combination of those things, it's like, it's the space we need to be able to hear what's happening on the inside. Cause it's next to impossible when you're busy doing, doing, doing to actually hear what you have to say. Right. Like I always say, there's another voice at the table, but we just yep. can't hear it. Right. Because so, we're so busy looking at the outside world and listening to all the clatter around us and, and conforming into what we're supposed to be doing instead of what we truly want to be doing. Yeah. Well, I mean, in the culture that we live in today, I read somewhere that it's like we take in the equivalent of three full length feature films worth of information every single solitary day. Like it's literally coming at us. Ooh. And so we're just like taking that in, taking that in. Right. But I mean, we can't process that amount of information, right? And it's literally just drowning out everything that's happening inside us. So creating small moments, and I say this to people, it doesn't need to be, I'm going to do a one hour meditation in the morning. It's like taking quiet, small, quiet breaks throughout the day, like connect to your breath, you know, have your coffee in the morning before the house gets up and just sit in silence, right? And just see yes. what comes up to you, for you. And like, for me, that looked like, like I, you know, I was kind of bedridden and, and the most I could do was like walk across the street to the park across from my, my home. And I would sit under a tree cause I couldn't walk very far. I was like, so I was physically burnt out with what it was. Right. Um, and I would sit under the tree and just like, now I know I was actually grounding. I did not know what that was at that particular mm -hmm. point in time. Right. But I was actually like grounding in and it was in that place where little things would come to the surface and you know, one day it was like, maybe you should write. And I was like, mm, I don't write. I I'm like, I write strategy decks. I'm not a writer. Right. And then I was like, okay, I'm just going to try it. And out of that was born the old chicks, no shit blog, which was how it started. Um, yeah. And so it was just like these little voices that we have. And it was like following those little voices and building that relationship and building that sense of trust in the little voice. And I still, to this day, I spend time every day just to go inwards and be like, okay, what do I need to hear today? Right. Yeah. Like, first of all, how am I feeling? You know, what do I want for my day? But what do I need to hear today? And I just ask that question to open the channel to be like, oh, that's the thing. Absolutely. And it's not just how are you feeling? What are you feeling? Because those are so different. And I've learned that too, from coaching and coaching my clients. It's just, it's, I always try to start up with you know, what are you feeling? Because it's so everybody, when someone asks you, oh, well, how are you doing? It, the answer is always fine. fine. That's like the broad question though. But is that really what you're feeling? Are you really feeling fine or is it more to it? Because yeah. being in tune with our emotions is key too, to uh, really understanding ourselves and understanding what we need as people, especially women, because you're completely right about that. We, we society throws all these things at, what women are supposed to do. I mean, look back many years ago, we weren't even supposed to vote. We weren't supposed to have rights. We weren't yeah. supposed to work. We didn't have a say. We didn't, our voices, and still to this day, we're not taken seriously because we're the, you know, lesser gender. That's what society, you know, we're supposed yeah. to look a certain way. We're supposed to act a certain way. We, we're not free to express ourselves on who we are. And I feel more and more, the more I do this podcast and the more beautiful women that I connect with on a weekly basis, the more I see that we aren't scared to speak up anymore. No. We're not scared no. to show the world who we are and what we have something to say, we're going to say it. And yeah. the, just that alone of woman empowerment, it's changing everything. It really is. Yeah. yeah. That's so true. So true. Yeah. So what do you feel the role of self-discovery, like finding one's purpose and finding passion in midlife? Why do you feel so many women besides societally norms? Why do you feel that most women are stuck? Do you feel that it's just because they feel that it is a certain number and there's nothing left to give to the world? Yeah. Or do you feel it goes even back to a belief code, a belief system, perhaps that they were yeah. taught as young girls? Yeah. I mean, I think it's a combination of a whole bunch of things. So it's, first of all, you know, the messaging that we get from our culture, right? Which you know, my pet peeve in life is when you see like advertising or commercials or whatever, and it features a woman like oh, even over the age of 45, let alone 50, right? It's like, 
bladder leakage protection, meal replacement shakes, retirement. And I'm like, okay, those are all necessary and valuable things. But like that tells a fraction of the story of what it means to be a woman at this time of our lives. And the reality is we have all of this knowledge and wisdom and experience, right? And when we can honor, like, and I, first of all, I truly believe that we have the experience that we need to have to gain the knowledge that we need to get so that we can follow our dreams and to chase our passion. But the problem becomes is that, you know, I talk to women all the time who are like, but what's my passion? What's my purpose? And the reason why they don't know their passion and purpose is because they're disconnected from it. In fact, I was literally on a call with a client this morning and we were talking about that very thing. And we went through a process. We were, you know, talking and she's like, Ooh, that just gave me goosebumps. I'm like that, that's the thing. That's yeah. the thing. Right. But you know, she had never actually stopped to like actually connect in with it. Like you said, on an emotional level, like how does it feel? And when she right. got into that, it was like, and I said, that now becomes the anchor to which, you know, you use all of this knowledge and experience because this chapter of our lives is about following our dreams, like making space for what is truly important to us. And that comes from inside of us. The answer yes. to what's next is nowhere out there. It's, it's inside us. And it's literally happens at this time of life. Like it's the perfect, you know, like even people talk about menopause as the beginning of the end. It's like, you know, okay, so we can no longer have children. Does that mean our usefulness on this planet is now just evaporated? Um, exactly. Right? right. And so we are meant to be able to share wisdom with the world, to have an impact, you know, to leave a legacy. And, you know, you see it in nature, for example, um, female orca whales, killer whales, when they go, they're the only other mammal to go through menopause. And after they, after menopause, they then become the leaders of their pods. So they help direct the pod to food. You know, they take care of the young, you know, they're like the leaders and the guides, right? And that's exactly what we are, right? It's just that we live in a culture that's told us we're not valuable, which is quite frankly, BS. Yes. Right? I was going to say, you could say bullshit because that's how I feel. Yeah. Well, it's total bullshit. And the only reason it exists is because we believe it. So right. if we could change the way that we see ourselves at this time of life, yes, you know, our bodies are going through some processes. Yes, they're changing. We're getting, you know, gray hairs and wrinkles, but that's not what it's about. And right. we get stuck on that part, like on everything we're losing. And then we miss the real point, which is us stepping into our greatness, because we're no longer consumed with careers and kids and all the things that took up all of our mental and emotional space. Oh, yeah. So now we have this space to be able to create the things that are important to us. And I, I mean, I get so ridiculously excited and inspired by the women I see, like women who have had, you know, long corporate careers, or even if they've been stay at home moms or like whatever it is, but they're now like turning to that dream that like that thing that they've always wanted to do. And when you see a midlife woman who is passionate about something and who is honoring that dream and the desire, there is literally nothing more powerful than that. Oh yeah. And, and these women are going to be changing the world. That's right. right? I mean, that's oh, my mission yeah. to, cre to create an army of midlife women changing the world because oh. it's so critically important. Absolutely. And, you know, I'll even stress because, you know, my, my viewers know I share a lot of personal details on my podcast because I'm an open book. I went through menopause back in 2015 and only because I had to have a full oophorectomy. I had stage four endometriosis. So after my second was born, I was like, time to go. Like, let's, let's clean house here because I had to for my health, you know, and my body instantly, instantly went into menopause. And it, it was the most awful, the most awful freaking yeah. thing ever, but it didn't slow me down. It was like, okay, I'm not, I, so what? I can't have any more. I thank God my two came out healthy, happy, 10 fingers, 10 toes, but I'm not freaking dead. Like there's mm -hmm. more to me yeah. than just having yeah. babies. And again, I feel that it goes back to those old school beliefs of men, you know, men should work. Women should be barefoot, pregnant, making dinner yeah. and cleaning house. And, and that's just not the way it is anymore. Like society is changing and women have the right to create and evolve and grow themselves 
you know, but also you have all these other responsibilities because I mean, we're women, we we're multitaskers. We can take care of a kid and be on the phone and cooking at the same time. Like we know how to do that instinctively, but there's no time for us. So I yeah. feel that when you go through all these earlier stages of your life and once it, the ship has passed, your kids are older, you, you know, there's more time for you to discover, okay, wait a minute, I haven't been focusing on me. So it's almost like taking the knowledge of what you don't want from your earlier years and not going down that, you have the passion and the purpose to create whatever you want. And I think only then when we come into this age, we actually realize it. Like we are powerful. We are powerful, yeah. powerful yeah. women. And we have this life experience. We've gone through the heartache. We, we've raised kids or maybe not. We've gone through careers. We know what makes us happy because we're instinctive creatures. We, we just have that intuition as women. But you're right. We tend to ignore it. We tend to shove it down because that's what society tells us. We're not important. Everything else is. Yeah. But when you realize you can't give from an empty cup, I think that's most women's aha moment. Yeah. That's so true. To take a step back. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So what, how can women really understand when you go into this phase of menopause? Because it looks different for every woman, obviously. How can women take that as an advantage, as maybe a turning point and a gift rather than look at it as something so negative the way society tends it to be all the time? Yeah. You know, and I don't want to, uh, you know, downplay the symptoms of menopause because they're very real. Um, they are. And, you know, a lot of women, you know, suffer, <laughs> yeah. uh, you know, the hot flashes and all the things, right? But here oh. is, here's a slightly different perspective. So I always call menopause, like the gift I didn't know I needed. Right. Because mm -hmm. in my previous state, I was able to keep go, 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 go. And in that going and keeping busy, I was able to like, just sail above a lot of stuff. Right. Like I just didn't deal with things. Right. right. It's just like, Oh, just keep going. It'll go away, push it down, do whatever, right? Keep it going, keep it going. And when I reached menopause and, you know, I mean, to, for me, menopause was like getting hit in the face by a two by four, because I oh. honestly, nobody told me what to expect, right? Ugh, neither um, did you know, mine. Right. And I was like, oh. all of these things were happening to me. And I was like, am I losing my mind? What's going on? You know, I wasn't sleeping, all of this stuff. But looking back at it in hindsight, what it did is it, a reduced my ability to kind of keep going and to skirt above the surface of things, right? Like my own voice included, right? And B, it reduced my tolerance for things, right? Like, oh, yes, right? Yes. And so stuff that I could maybe ignore or bypass, it was like, yeah, no, 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 no. I just like, literally, I don't physically have the energy to be able to mm -hmm. keep going past that thing. And I remember like early on in my journey, um, I went to a meditation class and I'd been playing with meditation for like a long time because that's what you were supposed to do to be successful, yada, yada, yada. And I had deemed it an abject failure because I couldn't quiet my mind enough. Like it's very busy up there. And then I felt compelled to go to this meditation class that was at a local yoga studio. And I remember I was on a business trip. I actually took a standby flight home so that I could make this class. I don't know why, but I was so compelled. And I went into that class and when the, it was a guided meditation, there was like six of us in the room, it's like dimly lit candles and I'm sitting on the mat and, you know, the meditation starts and I feel this well of emotion start to come up in, in me. And I'm like, what's happening? What's happening? I didn't know what was going on. Right. And I'm like, you know, get it together, Jennifer, get it together. Like what's happening. I couldn't stop it. And it just spills out. And I find myself crying. I have no idea why I'm crying. I have no idea what's going on, but I cannot control this crying. And I'm not talking like there was a tear rolling down my face. I'm talking like I was crying and like, you know, the meditation instructor just pushed a box of Kleenex onto my mat. And I sat there like sobbing and blowing my nose. I'm sure the other people in the class loved me. <laughs> Whatever. But, but what happened was, you know, and you know, the, the instructor at the end of it, she just smiled and nod. Like she didn't even say anything to me, but what she said as I was leaving, you know, with my two mittfuls of snotty Kleenex and mascara running down my face, right? She says, oh, I'm starting 
an eight week meditation series if you'd like to join. And before I knew what I was doing again, like, I don't even remember having a conscious thought that this is a good idea. I signed up. Nice. And I went to that meditation class every week. And for probably about four or five of the eight weeks, I would sit on my mat and I would cry. And what I realize now is that all of those years of bypassing and skirting over the surface of everything, I had just pushed all this stuff down inside of me and my body, you know, now it's like in menopause, right? Like if things are changing and my body's right. like, okay, we don't have the energy to hold this down here anymore. Right. And keep in mind, I'm also burnt out. Right. So physically, right. mentally, my body's like, yeah, no, sorry, we cannot hold this anymore. And we're just going to let it go. Right. We're going to purge. <laughs> Right. We had a purge, but in that right. process, I realized I created all of this space. Right. And had yes. I not experienced menopause, like to the point where like, I literally couldn't hold that beach ball underwater anymore. I would have probably kept on going and doing what I was doing, but it really was like the great awakening for me in that there's, Oh, there's some stuff here that I need to see. There's some things that I need to pay attention to. And one of those obviously was that, that little inner voice that was pushing me, calling me to something else. But honestly, you know, had I not had, you know, the crisis experience that I had, like I had invested so much to get to where I was, right? right. Like my entire career. I don't know if I would have had the courage to like blow it up and say, okay, I'm out. <laughs> like I'm starting. Something right. New. Right. So it really was like that whole experience really, I mean, it was truly a gift that got me started on a path that now I'm living a life that I am ridiculously passionate and excited about, right. Doing something that I yes. love. Um, and I've reinvented not only my life, but I've like reinvented myself. Like I've discovered who I am right. and I'm like, I kind of like this girl. She's kind of, yeah. Cool, right. Yeah. <laughs> she kicks ass. That's for sure. Right. right. Exactly. Because you gave yourself the space to actually sit and be and think for yourself without all this other clutter and all these all the other noise. emotions that you've been pushing down to please everything and everyone else in your life. And when you get that chance to actually be with yourself for once, it's so peaceful. Like I love my yeah. silence. I love it. I yeah. never used to like silence because you know, being a mom growing up with kids and running around and you're, you know, I was, I was a stay at home mom for many, many years. And, you know, you're used to the, the, the hassle and, and the, the screaming and the crying and the cooking, everything all at once. There's no time for a quiet moment because when you're in that stage of your life, when they're sleeping, you're sleeping. So you don't even have time to like sit there and be quiet. Yeah. And now I love one of the most beautiful things is when I wake up in the morning now, grab my coffee and I sit in silence and I reflect and I do my little morning meditation. And it, again, it, you know, it looks different for everyone, but just to be grateful for the things I have and to just yeah. allow whatever needs to come in to come in. And it starts with mindset too. Like today's going to be a good day and, and, and not having that negative self-talk because I feel that even when I went through menopause, I started noticing how my body was starting to change, not only physically, but mentally I started, I almost, it almost felt like I was pregnant all over again. My hormones were up and down and up and down because yeah. I had no more. So now my body's adjusting to all this newness and Again, I had nothing. So I had no hormones to regulate. I was just empty. I was like, you know, and that's a big part of it too. Like I felt like, wow, you know, purpose, having children, like that purpose was gone. So, okay, well, what am I after not able to have kids anymore? You know, and going through all these symptoms and, and mentally and physically and you start to learn about hormone weight. And I'm like, what the hell is going on? Like my body's changing, my skin's changing. What do you say to, to your clients? How do you embrace that? Because it is, your body's changing, your mental status is changing, your hormones are all over the place. How do you embrace that? Yeah, I mean, it really is, um, you know, and it's not to say 
that you shouldn't take care of the things that you need to take care of. Like everybody, I feel like you should do whatever you need to do to make yourself feel good every day. Right. Oh, yeah. Um, you know, obviously making sure that you're getting enough sleep and, you know, diet and exercise and all of that kind of stuff, but it really comes down to focus, right? As we're aging, we can only control aging to a certain degree, right? Like basically, you know, it is going to be what it's going to be. And where do you want to focus? Do you want to focus on what you're losing or do you want to focus on like what you have, like what you've acquired, right? And what you want to do with that? Because I mean, if you look at like the anti-aging cosmetic industry, I mean, it's like a $70 billion a year thing, but that industry is dedicated to making us feel less than to making sure that we don't look our age and we spend a lot of like time and money and you know mental energy on that which we can't really control when the reality is what we can control is living our best lives like making ourselves happy what's important to us what legacy do i want to leave you know how do i want to show up in my life like those are the things that we should be focusing on not the wrinkles and the gray hair and that's not to say like i still dye my hair right like oh me too right right do i use cream on my face absolutely you know i even have lashes right (laughs) because that makes that makes me feel good right (laughs) And so it's not to say like, ignore the, the, the aging process, do you and do whatever you want to do. But in addition to that, like that should be like, you know, 10 to 15% of our focus. And the other 85% is what do I want my life to mean? What's important to me? What legacy do I want to leave? Do I want to have an impact? Like all of those kinds of things, because that's the important part. What do I want to do with these next 30 or 40 or 50 years of my life? Not absolutely, you know, know, absolutely. And, and and, and image is a big part of it. We're taught as women, like image is everything and you have to be prim and proper and look a certain way. And I feel that the older I get, the, the more I realize that just being authentically me is enough. And I can't, you're right. You can't stop the wrinkles. You can't stop what's going to happen. Yes. You have some sort of like, obviously proper diet, exercise, enough sleep. Yes taking self-care is huge for any age, I feel, right. but it's learning to embrace those because we're so much more than our bodies. We have heart, we have passion. And if yeah. people are going to judge us off of our looks instead of our knowledge, there's the door. Like it doesn't yeah. bother me anymore. Like if I don't look a certain way or act a certain way, I have learned through my years of past experiences of looking back on my life, even 20 years ago, I was so focused on the materialistic, looking a certain way, acting a certain way, being everything for everyone else. It was freaking exhausting. It was so exhausting to be everything for everyone else in a way that it was literally stripping the authenticity of who I was because you have to act and be and and once I was just like no more boundaries boom done I'm done with this I'm going to just show up the way I want to show up there was the sense of freedom there was this sense of empowerment for myself that respectfully like I don't care what anybody thinks of me anymore I'm going to show up as me I am enough just as I am and the people that are drawn to me are the right people for me and vice versa. So like, I feel like you stop caring about that crap after you reach a certain age, you just don't care about that stuff anymore. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and you know, like, so there's this bit of a narrative that goes around, which I think also does us a bit of a disservice where it's like, you know, when you get older, you don't care as much. And the point, like we like to say it because it feels like it's an empowering stance, but the reality is a lot of us do care, right? right? Like we care what we look like. We care how we show up. We care about the people around us, but the part that we are is we're adding ourselves into the mix. Whereas before, like, you know, we didn't like all of that stuff mattered, but it was the only thing that mattered. Now it's like, Oh, now I'm, I'm including myself in this conversation. Like I want to feel good. I want to do what's important for me. I want to honor my own boundaries, my own values, my own things. So yeah, yeah, we do care like this whole, you know, no F's given because you're aging kind of things like, "Mm, yeah, but (laughs) we do care. Right. It's just adding ourselves into the equation and making time and mental space, like an energetic space for the things that matter to us. 
Absolutely. Cause it, you know, and that's the thing, like I'm doing it for me. I'm not doing it for the expectations exactly. of others. That's exactly. the difference. Whereas yes. before it's like, if I have to look a certain way or act a certain way or be prim and proper and have my hair color, this color and show up this way, it like, it didn't feel authentic. Now yeah. I look in the mirror and when I put on my makeup in the morning, it's me. And yeah, yeah. I guess other people exactly. can, you know, benefit from it, you know, great. But at the end of the day, it's for me and me alone. Yeah. And this chapter truly is about, you know, becoming more of our authentic selves, like who we were meant to be. And for a lot of us, like myself included, I had no idea who that was. Some women, you know, once had it and then lost it. And now they're reclaiming it. But it really is about coming back to the truth of who we are and what matters to us. Absolutely. Do you, can you tell me anybody that comes to mind of like, people that you've encountered during your life, especially, I know you, of course, but who have just reinvented yourself themselves, like some of your clients, obviously not mentioned in any names for discrepancy, mm-hmm. but how they've successfully reinvented themselves. What steps did they take to truly, besides sitting with themselves and actually thinking about what they truly want, what are some other steps that women can take to find out their purpose if they're still unsure of what that even is. Yeah. Um, so connecting with yourself and what, what you want is obviously one of the most important, more important, most important things. Um, the other thing that I think is incredibly important is like, what are the stories we tell ourselves? Because what I hear often is women who have dreams and desires for their lives or this thing, this longing, it will pop up. And then the very next thing that they do is they list their 10 reasons why it's not possible for them. Mm. And so it's like, you know, it's like that little voice that would pop up in my brain. If I had like listened to it, maybe I would have taken action, but I was like, I'm not listening. Right. But I hear this often. It's like, well, I would love to be able to, but well, that's not possible because, you know, my husband's doing this. And when the kids do, you know, finish this and when yeah, 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 and all the reasons. And when you start to unpack all of the stories that we tell ourselves about ourselves, you can see that 99.9% of them are not true, right? Right. So some of it is like things we learned in childhood, picked up from our parents, you know, through experiences that we've had, um, all of these things. And when you start to move those out of the way, you start to be able to see possibility. It's like, oh, okay, so I want to be a stunt car driver, let's just say, right? Right. Um, I can't do it because yada, yada, yada. It's like, well, maybe I can't do it right this moment, but maybe I could start watching videos on it. Maybe I could go to the track one day and see it. Like maybe, so there's ways that we can kind of start to break down these stories and these walls that start to make things more possible. Right. And I, like, I live in the realm of possibility. Like anything is possible. Me too. Right. We just have to give ourselves permission to have it. And, you know, like I said, it's taking small incremental. Like I always say, you know, you take the tiniest step in the direction that you want to go, like the absolute smallest step you can possibly think of. Right. And because like when you take a bunch of tiny steps, eventually you look back and you're like, wow, look how far I come. And here's the thing, right? Like we are as humans, our brains are very all or nothing. I'm either either a stunt car driver or I'm not like there's no middle ground in between that. Right. Um, and if we, if you immediately on day one said, I want to be a stunt car driver. And then you went to the track and you got in a car, your brain would be going, no, stop. Right. Like the the safety mechanisms in our brain, but when you take tiny little steps, our brain goes, oh, she's just taking a tiny little step. Everybody calm down. It's all good. Right. Then she's taking the next tiniest little step before you know what you get to the point where you're at the track one day, cause you've been there 10, 15 times. And somebody says, Hey, do you want to take a spin around the, you know, the track once? And you're like, Oh, okay. I like, and I mean, it's a bad example, but it's just an example of like allowing, giving ourselves permission to take tiny steps in the direction that we want to go is so ridiculously powerful. It's powerful to tell our subconscious mind about what's possible. It's powerful for us because it gives us a sense of empowerment as we take these steps. Right. And it opens up doors of possibility because maybe I don't actually want to be a stunt car driver. Maybe I want to be the guy who weighs the flag at the end of the race. Right. right. But one right. way or the other, if we'd never taken the action steps, we would never figure out what that is. So, You're so right. 
so like really challenging the stories that we tell ourselves about why things aren't possible, right? And creating, you know, small belief systems about who we are and knowing that we have everything that we need, like all of the knowledge and wisdom and experience we need, we have. And then taking those tiny action steps is the way that we get to, you know, honor those dreams and desires that we have. I love that. And, you know, I, I found too, cause I'm a belief systems coach as well. I work on mindset with my clients. I work on belief systems. And I often find with my clients that it's because we feel we don't deserve it. So we automatically create stories that could give us an escape, a way out. Yes. And what I often find myself asking my clients is, well, how bad do you want it? Because if there is a will, there is a way. And if you can, thoughts become things. So if you can think it, you can manifest it and create it. And it's how bad do you want it? You know, and I always tell my clients too, small steps lead to big goals. And it's taking tiny steps because I often find too, that even in my own, my own life, if you go from point A to point Z and you miss all the other letters, you're going to be overwhelmed because we just can't, we just can't comprehend and concept that. So if we take smaller steps and break them down into micro goals and say, okay, I'm going to do this and I'm going to start this. And you may not even know where it's leading, but the, the whole point is to at least take the first step. Yeah. And it's, it goes back to how bad do you want it? Because we are, we have the power and the choice to make it become reality. And we often, as women, use the excuse of, oh, well, I have a husband or, oh, I have the kids and I have to think of the kids and I have to, yeah. at the end of the day, your kids are going to be grown and off on their, their own and they're going to be following their own dreams. And then where are you going to be? Yeah. Are you going to be left going, okay, well, now that they're gone, is this the time to figure out my life? I feel that also as women, we don't see ourselves as, being more than just one thing. You know, there's always that title. We have a title. And if that title is stripped, why can't we be many things? Why can't we be co-creators of our own lives, mothers, wives, entrepreneurs, podcasters? Like, why can't we be many things? Why are we so limiting ourselves to just one thing or two things? We could be many things. Yeah, that's so true. That is so true. Oh my God, Jennifer, I'm so grateful that you came on today and inspired my audience. I definitely have to have you back. I have to definitely follow up with you to see where you are months, you know, going down and, and, and seeing where you are months later, just to see where you are. But I, I can't thank you enough from the bottom of my heart for you to spending your time with me today and my audience to just share how old chicks know shit. I love that. Thank you so much for having me. This was a fun con conversation. Oh my gosh. And honestly, I, I always tell, you know, all my guests, I put all your descriptions in the description box so that people can get a hold of you. But please, if people are listening, where can they find you, Jennifer? Um, so you can find me by my name, Old Chicks No Shit, um, on Instagram, uh, Facebook. Um, there's obviously a website that's www.oldchicksnoshit.com. Um, and there's the Old Chicks No Shit podcast, which is available on all of the podcast platforms. So yeah, you can find me anywhere. <laughs> I love it. Thank you so much, guys. Thank you so much for being part of this. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe, reach out to Jennifer. If you need any guidance, I'll put everything, all of her information in the description. I have my information in the description. Get a hold of us if you need us. And I will see you guys on the next episode. Be well, guys. Thanks.